Guten Abend. Ähm, ich bin Rabia El Khouri, ich bin Diversity Manager hier im DFF und ich freue mich, Sie hier bei uns im Kino des Filmmuseums zu begrüßen bei dieser Ausgabe von Africa Alive. And now in English. Um, we're very happy to welcome you here at the Film Museum as part of this exceptional edition of Africa Alive, which is taking place in the summer. And um, for this screening tonight, we're very happy to be screening the film Noura Rev, Noura Dreams, Noura Tahlam, which is a film that is coming all the way from Tunisia. As part of this edition, the festival decided to do a small focus on Tunisia. Uh, there are three films that are screened as part of the program, one of which is the film that you're going to see tonight. It's been 10 years since the Jasmine Revolution kicked off in Tunisia and then spread all over the Arab world over what is known as the Arab Spring. The films that you're going to see which relate to Tunisia are not necessarily about the Arab Spring, but it shows you also the diversity of the cinematographic landscape in Tunisia and how filmmakers are dealing with today's issues, today's problems, today's struggles in Tunisia of today. Noura has three children. She is in love with Lasad, and she dreams of having a new beginning with him. And Noura has met the Lasad while her abusive husband is in jail. Uh, his name is Jamel. And because Noura and Jamel are not divorced, and according to Tunisian law, she and Lasad risk imprisonment for adultery, an imprisonment that can go up to five years. One day, and unexpectedly, Jamel gets out of prison. As such, Hind Bujama explores several topics uh, in the film, topics that include the struggles of a single woman in Tunisia, adultery, the patriarchal society, police corruption, but also what it means to be free and to feel in love. And as such, um, Hind is not a stranger to address so many of these topics. Uh, and the situation of women in Tunisia, the, her documentary debut, It Was Better Tomorrow, Yaman Ash, which is a film from 2012 and a very, very, very strong and special documentary film that premiered in Venice. Uh, she followed the story of Aida, a homeless Tunisian woman who believes nothing has changed in Tunisia since the fall of Ben Ali. And as I said, it has been 10 years now since the Jasmine Revolution and since Ben Ali has been ousted. And this is really a, a different kind of reflection through a feature film on the Tunisia of today. Um, in her film, we're going to see the contemporary Tunisian society with two very strong performances by two, film, two actors, an actress and an actor that you might have seen in other films. Uh, the one and only Hint Sabri, who holds the film together as Noura, a woman who's torn between her duty and her love, and Lutfi Abdelli, who is also a multi-talented artist, dancer, actor, but also an activist who was behind the Degage movement that led to the oosting of Ben Ali in 2011. I'm very happy to uh, be introducing uh, filmmaker Hind Bujama, who's made it even though against all odds with a strike that was happening. So we're very happy to have Hind with us. Um, and I just wanted to say that Hind is a Tunisian Belgian filmmaker who's based in Brussels. Uh, she first started working as a technician before doing the films that she has been also dreaming of doing. Uh, her feature debut was a documentary, It Was Better Tomorrow, played in Venice. And Noura Dreams is her feature fiction debut, which played in Toronto at the festival in 2019, played in San Sebastian, had a fantastic tour before Corona, decided to stop the dreams. And so the dream is tonight becoming a reality and Hind is meeting with the public in Frankfurt for the screening. Thanks for being with us, Hind. Thank you. Wow, <laughs> two years <laughs> without public. I think I am. I'm going to <laughs> to do to kiss you all. I <laughs> mean, to touch you. Are you real? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you to be here. Oh. I'm 
gonna take a selfie with you. <laughs> yes, I have to do that. <laughs> Can I? Okay, but I have to, to do that. So I propose you to, for example, d'être debout, ou bien de lever les bras, ou... Yeah. Yeah, because... Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and do you want to say something about the film? No, I we think that we will have the occasion to talk after the movie. Now I will uh, let you show the movie, but I was just enjoying <laughs> <laughs> To be here and to be with the, the, the public, it's uh, so amazing. Thank you to be here. And uh, <laughs> So we wanted to say that we will have the chance to talk to Hind after the screening. So if you have some questions about the film, about Tunisia today, about politics, about women, Hind is ready to answer everything with no taboos, just for you. Thank you so much. A warm welcome. An applause to Hind Bujama. So we're gonna try to do the talk in English, and if Hind has any problems, I'm gonna try my best to translate for you uh, from French. Uh, Hind, thank you for being with us. I'm not sure if we mentioned this in the beginning, but this is your very first physical screening since a long time, so we're very happy to have a public which is a full house under these circumstances. Um, I wanted to start with you this conversation by um, letting first the public know that I'm gonna ask a couple of questions because I, I think for him it's more interesting to hear from you than from me. Um, it's been, the, we're starting this conversation with the bigger picture, of course, it's been 10 years since the events that have started actually in Tunisia, the Arab Spring that started in Tunisia uh, with the Jasmine Revolution. It was really like a big movement of solidarity between the younger generation, but also the people who live in Tunisia. And out of that film you made, out of that protest, you made your first feature documentary, which is called It Was Better Tomorrow. And this was a film that followed the life of Aida, a woman who's struggling to find herself in the Tunisia of today. In this film, you also follow the struggle of a mother, a woman, a wife, uh, and also a lover who wants to find herself in the Tunisia of today. And I wanted to start with you on this uh, question. Uh, who is Noura for you? What does Noura represent for you? <laughs> Big question. I mean, the I don't like to 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 say that a woman, I mean, can be a symbol, because there are millions of women and different women, and uh, it's a nonsense. So I would say maybe it's a it's a a woman who. I met I uh, met after the revolution one of the women I met women I met after the revolution and um, she's a Tunisian woman a normal Tunisian woman I uh, I would say and that woman was impersonated by uh, Hint Sabri who's actually if we put it into brackets she's a big woman she's a big name actually mm -hmm. she's a very big actress and uh, she has for some years she has not played a lot in cinema she did other projects and other things so with her she made like a real comeback with you in in the film and the film played in toronto played in yeah. sebastian had a tour uh, san sebastian had a tour before the whole COVID thing how was it for you to find um, Hint Sabri for the film? Did you think of her while writing the film or did you make a casting? How was it that you actually got to meet uh, Hint Sabri? Um, 
I was a little bit afraid because she's really, really famous. I mean, in a really big star, and uh, it was a kind of challenge for me to to bring her uh, in uh, Nura. I mean, because she's so far from uh, from the life of Nura. Uh, now she lives in uh, Egypt. So uh, since so many years, I mean, uh, I don't know, maybe twen twenty years or fifteen years, something like that. And um, um, so I think that we were the two of both of us uh, were afraid of uh, of um, of of Nura. I mean, uh, and we worked, we worked a lot together. And she's really a smart actress because uh, she worked a lot first, and uh, she came to Tunisia and observed uh, a lot the the uh, the women's and observed uh, uh, how Tunisia changed for her because she's not uh, in Tunisia now. But uh, she's a smart, smart one of the, uh, the kind of smart actress you like to work with because um, she's uh, she work with the emotions. She's not the kind of uh, actress who work uh, who are uh, who is um, uh, uh, intellectual. I mean, uh, in her play, she's really s someone who. who who feel the um, and um, I think that I'm the kind of director who works exactly in the same way. I mean, I need to feel the 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 play. I need to feel the moment. I need to to to. to. So we met. And next to uh, Hind Bujama, you also had other actors. Uh, some of them are very famous. Some of them are really, really newcomers. And also for you, this was your first feature fiction. So I wanted to ask you, how was it to bring all of these tough topics that you bring on the big screen, but also work it out with the set of actors being the professional ones and also the newcomers? Well, I think that uh, being director uh, first is having faith in the people you work with and um, it was the case for 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 me i mean um i don't look to to the the name of the people um i mean actors are people i mean uh, so m my relation is based really on the on the humanity of the 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 people I worked with uh, so um, I uh, talk with them before the movie and I told them the the way I work I mean the way I uh, my behavior with people and uh, um, they understood that. It was like that. I mean, everybody is the same. There is no different be difference between people. There is difference of, I mean, practice of sure, of uh, of uh, career of sure, but, but not uh, in hum the humanity. I mean, so explaining that helped me helps me a lot to have uh, a, a good relation with. Everybody, so everybody was give give given to the other uh, everything. I mean, uh, it was important to me to 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 tell the actor, the professional one, to to be careful with the other one, and they do. They do without problem because. Yes, uh, two stars. Lutfi, the husband, is a, a big star too. Um, but uh, I think they are s smart, <laughs> and they understood that uh, the more important thing when you shoot a movie is to the human relations. It's, uh, you speak a lot about the human approach, and also in the film there is also a lot of humanity, however we see it, because there are so many tough 
aspects in the film that you're bringing up. You speak about so many levels of corruption that we see in Tunisia, but also all over the Arab world. Uh, you speak about this woman who's fighting for her basic rights to be with the person she loves without having to be afraid of being jailed because of adultery. I wanted to ask you about the bringing of all of these topics into the writing of the film. How did you think about writing the film that we just saw? How, uh, was there so many levels? And of course, how much were the events that were happening in Tunisia have influenced you in your writing? Um, I think the... The first time I heard about this law uh, on the adultery, um, it was six years ago, I mean, there's something like that. And um, there were... Sorry, would you mind telling the public a bit about the law? Yeah, the law condemned uh, the adul uh, adultery, so the both, the man and the woman, uh, uh, to jail. Uh, up to five years yeah so they don't do that now M it's maximum two years but pff, one day it's <laughs> it's <laughs> one day it's uh, too much so um i uh, i knew a person who was a victim of uh, this decision because her husband put her in jail with his her lover um, so I was asking myself, what is this kind of law here, and why people, um, I mean, uh, send the husbands or, or wife, because it's the same thing, a wife can send her husband in jail, it's the same thing, and I knew uh, cases like that after, I mean, it's, it's a nonsense, I mean, it's a so personal story, uh, and putting people in jail for those things i think maybe it's better to let the, the <laughs> to let the rooms in jail for m more important things <laughs> than that <laughs> um so uh, the <laughs> so uh, it begins like that and after that when i i shoot uh, my first documentary i knew a lot of women in this uh, in um, uh, in these situations and um with aida who was the character of uh, yemenage it was better tomorrow uh, uh, i knew a lot of her friends and um, I stayed eight years where the, those mo women trying to understand how they live, how they... And I noticed a lot of... I was really surprised by the way, the freedom they have in the sexual uh, life, uh, even if it's, uh, I mean... Um, um uh, in the in the um, area of the delinquency, je sais pas si on peut dire ça, la délinquance. Mm -hmm. no? um, uh, so I observe a lot uh, all the stories of violence, the violence uh, they, they they lead, and uh, I begin to write uh, noir. I mean a bit like the feature is a bit like a continuation of what you started a bit with uh yes maybe <laughs> I, I think i have to change because i'm always talking about women <laughs> but it's okay i mean uh, we, uh, when you meet people and they 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 give you something i mean uh, they give you they suffer they you don't want to to stay here and to and to go back home and uh, eating your i mean uh, i don't know uh, meat and uh, or saumon <laughs> or something like that and and uh, do not uh, doing something i mean um, so i felt the need to to talk about uh, wo what i saw um, I would like to ask the public if you have questions for Hind uh, in the meantime. 
or if you need extra minutes to think, I will ask you, Hind, uh, you're preparing a new project now after Noura, if you, uh, if it's also something that is in relation to your previous works or is it something that is going to be completely different topic-wise? I don't know if we are able to see if we are different. I mean, if I am able, I don't know that it's possible to me to, to see if I'm different between my movies, but because I, I don't think about that. But um, I'm working on Brotherhood this time. I would like to explore uh, the jealousy between uh, the sisters and brothers. Uh, yes. <laughs> so we have a question. Yes, please. Uh, first of all, thank you for your film. I liked it very much. Uh, I got very involved in it, in uh, the dramaturgy and everything. Yes, but I have a very simple question because uh, uh, it was of, um, it's of the sneaker falling down on the kid. Uh, what does it mean? I didn't understand. Stan. Yes. The shoes. The sneaker, yes. Ah. <laughs> For me, it was. Um, he said. Uh, he said at the end of the movie, God. Uh, uh, je sais plus. I, I don't know how it's it's it, it's subtitled in English. But God was hitting me. <laughs> yeah, hitting me with the shoes. Mm. Um, uh, it was uh, for me. It looks so there is a link between the two. Huh? So the shoes fell on his head, and after God. So it was to see, to, to show how people could be crédules. Uh, how can you say crédules? Qui croient facilement en tout, quoi. Um, believe easily believe in, yes, superstitions and, uh, and uh, religion, I mean. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> Mythology, because the religion is the mythology. Um, hello. Uh, first of all, thanks for being here. And um, I really enjoyed the watching this film a lot. Thank you. Um, I think slice of life films like this are very important because everybody can connect with them in some way. Um, but actually, my question uh, is more about some of the influences I noticed in the film. Uh, I see some parallels between how in Iran, a lot of filmmaking kind of, uh, there's some like neorealism involved in here. Uh, I'm just curious uh, if you've drawn any uh, influences from like films like A Separation or like any Abbas Kiarostami films. Uh, I really, uh, and again, I, I really enjoyed watching the film a lot. It was great. <laughs> they thought it's not the first time that uh, they do the comp uh, they compare I mean uh, the separation with Nora. Um but I think it is not the same um, I mean the same um, uh, Iran is not Tunisia I mean we are so so far I mean Tunisia is uh, you can say a modern modern country, I mean, in the Arab world, the modernest one, I mean, uh, with Lebanon, it maybe. It is believed that Tunisia yeah. is the most modern <laughs> country in yeah. the Arab world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it's not the same religion, it's not the same behaviors, social behaviors. I mean, so um, I, I can't see the... the uh, similar behaviors between the two, I mean, identity. So I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I can't ask for answer uh, to this question because I think it's maybe a question of uh, emotions. Because I think that love or jealousy or it's international. I mean, I don't think it's uh, it uh, has a passport or a nationality. 
I think it's uh, jealousy in all over the world, uh, depend of the person, not of the uh, passport. I mean, uh, so, voilà. <laughs> yes, please. We're getting your microphone. Thank you so much. I like the movie very, very much, and I'm very impressed. Thank you. And I need to say, um, I have a very simple question why you did have chosen the name Nora. But uh, what I want to say is, um, I love the character of her husband. I don't think it's all ab simply about the woman. I love the character of being uh, uh, a man who is very not a bit weak because of love. He wants to to do his best, but it's uh, very, very difficult. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's that was surprising me, and I love uh, I love this character. Yeah, thank you so much for the movie. Thank you. Yes, it's strange because sometimes you. I don't want to judge the vi the violence. I don't like the violence. Uh, violence, of sure, and uh, I denounce the uh, the violence. But um, when we when you meet this kind of a person in your life, um, you you feel w w was the case for me because I met uh, thiefers and uh, a lot of men like that before doing the movie. Um, but um, it's like they are in jail with their emotions, so they they don't have they don't know how to to be with a woman. So they are afraid of the judgment because they are men. <laughs> man. <laughs> and uh, and uh, mm, they are not dead inside. They feel, but they, know they don't know how to translate the love and the feeling. So sometimes it gives uh, violent uh, reactions, I mean, uh, so yes. I also want to, uh, maybe I don't know if this was also a question, if you want to tell us why you chose the name Nora? Ah yes, I forgot. Um, Nora. Sometimes there's no reason. I mean, not everything is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any reason. I thought. Uh, I think that I I know woman woman a woman and uh, her daughter her <laughs> called uh, Nora. So I found it beautiful. I mean, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Ah, that's why and I was asking myself. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I was sure <laughs> because it's a so special question. I mean, no, but uh, yes, maybe because Nura is uh, from Nur and Nur is the light, so it's beautiful f because for me she is uh, a light. A light. Yeah. We have a question here. <laughs> have Your a parents question. too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the film. So it was really impressing. My question is, at the end, I I didn't get what happened. So uh, Nora and her kids look like happy. I didn't get the uh, end of the film. What happened at the end? Ah, because there is no end in the movie. <laughs> but they were really happy. So her husband was in the jail. Mm, but I don't want to answer. <laughs> That's why I stopped my movie here. <laughs> I want to let you imagine yourself <laughs> <That's I'm> <laughs> the, the story. <laughs> you can choose to, I mean, uh, you can choose to tell that uh, um, it's l like a Walt Disney story. I mean, uh, come on, dit, ils, ils vécurent heureux et eurent plusieurs Lived enfants. <laughs> lived happily ever after. <laughs> you can imagine this kind of end, and you can imagine that maybe she will have a problems, more problems with her husband, uh, or maybe Lassad, her lover, will come back. I don't know. 
I don't know because I don't know because uh, those kind of women um, are uh, always in those kind of situation, always don't knowing. That's not a regular uh, life. I mean, it's always the the need to 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 have a uh, life. Uh, uh, comment dire? Uh, comment je Even in French, I don't find the word. But uh, a calm, calm life. They don't want that, I think. She don't want that. She need to to feel uh, alive. <laughs> there is a question in the back, I think. Uh, yes. No, actually, I was just trying to understand for myself because um, before that question about the end, we were just talking about the character of the husband, right? So the the man who got out from from jail, and. I would not say that he was acting that way because of love for uh, Nura, but more because he was somehow thinking that he was owning her. Ego. So, and um, yeah, definitely ego. And I think there are so many factors that men somehow don't want maybe to understand that um, after so many things happened in life and he was in jail and whatever, there was a lot of violence and uh, the fact that she was not even able to trust him and he was not maybe the husband she always dreamed of. Um, I think it's too easy, Just as that was how I understood it, the comment before that, it's too easy just to understand it that he was acting out of love for her but maybe a, a broken masculinity or whatever. And in all in all, I, I saw this uh, relationship being very toxic and that she, of course, was trying to find a way out of it. And um, so with all these challenges uh, being somehow judged maybe uh, by society, also trying to like get, okay, take care of your children. And then um, what I found very... Uh, like what was very um, maybe triggering for somehow is that the moment when when she was very angry with him in, in the living room and she was saying to him, uh, you are not a man and uh, you, you are like ruining my life. Mm -hmm. And maybe also the sentence, you are not a man, somehow triggered him. And what he did then was going like to her exactly. laugh and everything like taking all the violence and all the aggressi aggressiveness against him to reinstall his masculinity. Exactly. So uh, this this was a very, um, uh, I would say, a very crucial moment within the movie somehow, yeah. But you were in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> you were in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly that. I mean, it's exactly that. But I think that we are a lot. Uh, everybody is a mix of um, of uh, the society, the ego, the 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 love, all, all the emotions, and uh, that is the point uh, of the characters. I mean, the, the uh, when I write. Uh, a character, um, it's like a mix table, you know. I think that everybody of us, uh, we are um, a mix table of music, you know. And il y a des boutons, buttons, and every button, uh, one of the buttons is uh, love, the other one is jealousy, the other one is uh, all the emotion you can imagine in the... Uh, in the uh, uh, all the emotion who exists in life. Um, except that this table, we are not all at the same level in the emotions. We have all the same emotions in us, but we don't have the same level uh, with the button. And uh, uh, that's why um, I told uh, that he loves her too, because he loves her too, but his ego is <laughs> in the level, <laughs> high level, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> and uh, and the one of the lover, no, but yes too, because uh, he, he, can't, he can't support that, uh, he can't um, accept, excuse me, that uh, she stays 
uh, with her, the, son, uh, the, the, the husband when he uh, came out from jail. So everybody has this kind of this uh, level of uh, emotion and uh, and uh, who makes the identity of everybody i mean uh, that's it but yes absolutely is there any other question from the audience to hand hint if there is no question i would like to finish the talk with um, of course, um, I don't know what you think about the Arab Spring, the terminology of the Arab Spring, if a change happened, if something happened at all, if we moved forward, if we managed to express ourselves in the Arab world and all of that. So I wanted to ask you, Tunisia today, for you as a filmmaker and as a person who's interested in human stories, um, do you think it's a place that is easy for you to tell stories, to do stories, to produce films, to speak to people after everything that happened in the last decade? Oh uh, Yes, first of all, I would like to talk about this word, I think the Arab word, it's a big word, because we are different between us. I mean, when you see the Arab of the Maghreb, they are not the same that the Arabic Peninsula, you are not the same of the uh, East, Middle East, or Middle East uh, Arabic. So it's like compare a Swedish person to a, an Italian one. S I mean, yes or no? Uh, the Arab world shares a, s shares a language, more or less, when the Italians uh, more and the than Swedish. Languages <laughs> More than languages, and you can compare something for uh, someone for Qatar, for example, for Tunisia, it's not the same. I mean, uh, we are not, uh, don't have the same uh, traditions, but we are in the same bag, Arab world. Wow. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> no, because it's important to 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 tell that. Um, so um, I think that Tunisia, yes, I I it's an, uh, an exception because now, as a filmmaker, me and my colleague are really uh, uh, happy to, to 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 do our job in uh, a total uh, freedom. I mean, because we have a freedom after the we 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 want that. Uh, after the revolution, uh, so it's important, and I think that we are one of the rare Arabic country who can uh, talk uh, about what we want now without uh, being uh, aggressed or judged. Or so, and it's important for the art, for the cinema, for the dance, for a, mm, uh, for a theater, for a lot of things. Uh, we know that. So yes, yes, I think that uh, uh, Tunisia is a little bit different um, of the, the neighbors, I mean, yeah. Um, before we leave you, I want to tell you that uh, there are two other Tunisian films that are playing in the program of Africa Alive. Uh, there is the new film of Nouri Bouzid, Les Epouvantai, uh, Nouri Bouzid is a very acclaimed and established filmmaker, and this is his newest film. And also there is the very striking film of Mahdi Barsawi, which is called Bikin Aish, A Son, A Fils. Uh, this film has really did a fantastic tour since it premiered. And the, the actor of the film, uh, Sami Bouajila, has won this year the César Award in France, which is the equivalent of the Lola here. Uh, for his performance, and this was really a standout uh, performance. And for him, as a Tunisian actor, for a Tunisian film to win the César was really a tremendous moment. Both films are playing in the framework of this festival. Even though the weather is really nice, we're very happy to see you at the cinema, and we hope to and see you in the coming I would like days. to thank you again. It was a real pleasure to discuss with us, to exchange the two years. It was too much for us as uh, directors of and uh, thank you thank you thank you thank you to come in
Thank you, Hint, for being with us, and thank you for being with us.